We've hit an inflection point within the PC gaming market. Handhelds aren't just niche anymore. Steam Deck, Switch 2, ROG Ally, Lenovo Legion Go, they're here for good and they represent a desire from players, a desire for deeper gaming experiences on the go. Though these pieces of kit present a challenge to developers, how do we push the latest and greatest in graphics technology while also delivering an experience that is scalable on these lower end machines? You'll have people, myself included, who will decry the annual release of 8GB GPUs and in the same breath want the newest game release to be optimized for the Steam Deck. Some would argue it cannot be done, but I beg to differ. Join me as we explore how to optimize for PC handhelds. Like I alluded to in my intro, a lot of people will write off handhelds as a hardware group that shouldn't take up dev time. With the Steam Deck included, the entirety of the PC handheld space has maybe sold around five to 10 million units over the years. And that's a gross estimate, not a conservative one. Which doesn't sound impressive to the hundreds of millions of desktops and laptops in circulation. Though on the other hand, that's still five to 10 million of units out there and with an install base that really supports games. This is anecdotal at best, but if you look at prior handheld console releases, you'll notice that the software attach rate is quite high compared to the traditional box console. There's something about a handheld, a certain je ne sais quoi, that makes people wanna play games. If you're a developer, you'd be missing out on a niche but dedicated install base of users who will support a project that supports their platform. Third-party ports sold exceptionally well on Nintendo Switch, and games that advertise Steam Deck verified status also do quite well. So instead of writing these machines off as underpowered, how do we get down to the business of optimization? Well, the first step, of course, is choosing an editor. Now, full disclosure, I am an indie dev who makes games in Unreal Engine 5. I have a few projects going on concurrently right now, but my current focus is a smaller scale 3D platformer. It's quite early days, but I do feel this is a great genre for handhelds and will be an excellent project to add to my portfolio. Now, typically optimization would happen in passes and not this early into a project's life. Though for the sake of today's video, we're just gonna get down to brass tacks. Let's start with the baseline Unreal setup. Out of the box, UE5 is tuned for high-end desktops. Lumen, Nanite, high shadow resolutions. It's all incredible for fidelity, but it'll absolutely punish a handheld like the Steam Deck. So if you're starting fresh or trying to scale back an existing project, here's what to look at first. First, open your project settings and disable everything that you're not actively using. If you're not shipping with Lumen, disable it entirely. Switch your lighting mode to baked or SSGI. Virtual shadow maps, turn them off. Go for traditional cascaded shadows. Reflection captures can be handled statically or with screen space reflections at lower quality. And your texture pool, Cap that early, something like 500 to 800 megabytes depending on your asset style. Use the built-in scalability system. Create custom buckets for handheld targeting. Steam Deck's sweet spot is usually between low and medium, but you don't want it to look like a potato. Dial in texture and shadow quality first, then adjust view distance and effects. And what I'm saying is not some deep and arcane knowledge I've attained, it's just good development practice. A lot of modders will do similar things with their performance mods on AAA games. However, let's make things interesting. I'm not going to touch the default rendering settings of the engine. We're just gonna load the project raw onto the Steam Deck and see how it fares. And the reason for this is because you'll have developers out there who will wanna use these exciting technologies in their projects. Optimization doesn't mean turning off all the nice things. There's other ways to make meaningful change, which we'll get into. For now, Let's measure how a bog standard UE5 game like this would run on our Steam Deck. To test this, I needed a quick and repeatable way to compare different configurations. So I built a custom settings blueprint, something lightweight that I could drop it to any level and instantly toggle between high and optimized profiles. It's not fancy, but it works and that's what matters. So let me walk you through how it's set up. At the top of the graph, we've got an event begin play node this is the first thing that fires when the level loads. From there, I've chained a series of execute console command nodes, each one adjusting a core scalability setting. Screen percentage to 100 or native res, and view distance, shadows, anti-aliasing, post-processing, all set to high. Then we add a print string node to confirm the changes applied. 
This is just for debugging. Now here's where it gets fun. I added a flip-flop node triggered by the H key, which toggles between two settings presets. You have your high preset, 100% resolution, all quality settings at three, and your Steam Deck preset, 70% resolution, quality settings at two, which is roughly medium. This gives me a quick way to flip between default and optimized settings while testing. Super useful during development. So in layman's terms, what does this change? Well, quite a bit. By scaling back resolution and stepping quality from high to medium, we're easing up on the GPU and CPU load across the board. That's fewer draw calls, lower texture sampling, and lighter post-processing effects. On paper, that may sound minor, but on the Steam Deck, it's difference between choppy and playable. Just loading up the default high settings sees us at, you know, an average of 26 FPS with shaky frame times. You can see the hills and valleys in the graph. Just applying those minor tweaks sees a huge difference. We go from an average of 26 FPS at full quality to 43 FPS with optimized settings. That's nearly a 65% improvement and it's entirely within the engine's own scalability system. No code rewrites, no removed features, just smarter defaults. And the key is you get that benefit without a huge hit to visual quality on the built-in display. Sometimes we lose sight of the fact that a smaller panel will mask a lot of the compromises lower settings bring. Why unnecessarily waste power and your rendering budget when the majority of players won't be able to see an appreciable difference anyways? YouTube compression will not be doing these shots any favors, but can you honestly tell which side-by-side -side is the higher quality one? If you're struggling to spot the difference, now imagine these same scenes, but on a seven inch screen that's a good few feet away from your face. Though we can do better yet. I am a firm believer in at least a locked 60 Hertz gaming experience. So what else can we do if we wanna push performance up? Well, it's time to start dipping into the dark arts of optimization. If you ask a PC gamer with a desktop and another one with a handheld, what they think about upscaling technology, they'll get two separate answers. The desktop user will probably lambast technology as a lazy crutch for developers not optimizing correctly, while the handheld user will consider it a gift from above. And it could be argued that there's some truth to both sentiments. Upscaling tech is sometimes implemented poorly in games and abused to the point where all benefits are negated. However, I would rather have the technology than not at all especially for power constrained devices like PC handhelds. I've implemented FSR 3.1 into my project and we're gonna see exactly what it does and how it scales on a device like the deck. First things first is to analyze the results with the default highest settings because I believe a technology like this should be used to enhance performance with the least impact towards visuals. So with high settings still applied, enabling FSR at quality mode bumps performance from 26 FPS to 41 FPS on average. That's quite the jump with the softest hit towards visuals. We also get much stabler frame times and the erratic pace is gone. Switching to balanced lands around 52 FPS and performance mode pushes it up to 54 FPS. Finally, ultra performance flirts with 59 FPS though at a noticeable visual cost. So what is the visual trade-off? Because FSR is not a free lunch. Well, in quality mode, artifacts are nearly invisible unless you're pixel peeping or freezing frames to hunt for flaws. In motion, it's pretty clean and sharp, especially on the deck's display. But to go below that, especially balanced and performance, and you'll start to see more anti-aliasing shimmer and temporal flickering, particularly on fine geometry and thin edges. The biggest weakness, transparent materials. In my project, specular highlights on the ocean surface break down fast. When the character jumps and the water's in the background, FSR struggles to resolve the subtle ripples resulting in a sort of uh, noisy fizzle effect. That's because temporal reconstruction has a hard time predicting how translucency behaves frame to frame. FSR 4 has really addressed a lot of these issues. But you know, we don't have FSR 4 on handhelds yet. Though, still, on the quality preset, the benefits far outweigh the flaws. For most scenes, 
especially stylized or medium scale ones, FSR 3.1 delivers a massive uplift in performance while maintaining visual coherence. And for those who forgot, this is on the highest UE5 settings. If we apply the optimized Steam Deck settings, we see a much more pronounced jump. You essentially achieve FSR performance mode level of performance on FSR quality mode. So if you're aiming for 40 to 60 FPS on handhelds without gutting your game's art direction, this is how you do it. However, I can already hear some now saying, that's great, Fox, but how does this help those of us who don't have ancient PC handhelds? Well, you cheeky little git, I'm glad you asked. When you do the legwork to optimize a project, it pays dividends on much more powerful hardware. I tested this project on the ROG Ally X with the help of a good channel friend, Gaming for Insight. He's a kindred spirit in this space and a man who's well versed when it comes to PC handhelds and their various intricacies. He's a nice guy with even nicer content, so when you're done here, go over there and give his stuff a watch. He did me a favor by loading up the project and taking a nice stroll around this city hall building. And what we see is not just the product of better hardware, but really better optimization. With the highest settings and no FSR, the run comes in at about 70 FPS on average. That is 40 more than the same settings and run on the Steam Deck, and the scaling continues from there. With FSR and the highest settings, you get an average of 85 FPS on quality, 100 on balanced, 110 on performance, and 122 on ultra performance. With FSR quality mode and optimized settings, there's of course no contest. The same run comes in at an average of 120 FPS on quality with a capped FPS limit of 144 for the other modes. They each hit the cap and fluctuate around there. The averages are near identical. And do not be fooled by the low poly geometry. It's stylized, but very taxing on the GPU. These models have hundreds to thousands of tries. One apartment building is enough to drop a few frames if you're not careful. So this result is very encouraging. And yes, it isn't direct capture, with the Allies high resolution screen, the FSR artifacts are much harder to spot, which is exactly what you want. If a developer can make such smart compromises to a game that you can't even tell they were made, well, that's a good developer. So class, what did we learn today? Well, we learned that performance isn't just about brute force. It's about respect, respect for the hardware, respect for the player, and honestly, respect for your own project. Whether you're building for Steam Deck, the ROG Ally, or any device in between, handheld optimization isn't some niche edge case anymore. It's becoming essential, and with tools like UE5 Scalability System and FSR 3.1, we're no longer choosing between fidelity and fluidity. We're finally allowed to have both. If you're a developer, I hope this gave you something practical to walk away with. And if you're a handheld gamer, Know that good experiences don't happen by accident, they happen by design. Thank you all for watching. I'm the Silicon Fox. Keep building smart, keep testing, and I'll see you all in the next one. Ciao.